Now, something very, very interesting, and you know we're all about integration here at DM Digital, and uh, particularly at Shine as well. If there's an organisation that brings communities together, we will always give it adequate airtime. One of those organisations which we're featuring this morning is Muslim Writers, and Zahid Hussein is with me this morning. Good morning, Zahid. Good morning, Derek. Uh, you're the founder, aren't you, of Muslim Writers. Tell me a bit about the background, first of all. How did it come to be? Well, I'm a writer myself. I'm a novelist and a poet. And okay. I set up the Manchester Muslim Writers last year in May and then in November last year we set up the Lancashire Muslim Writers. Basically I've always felt that there isn't a place that you know young Muslims could go to in order to learn about writing and actually share the work that they're producing. So this is a, a creative a, a meeting of creative minds That's almost right, like a drama workshop the equivalent of yes. to, to, to come in and kind of share ideas and thinking right. and and I, I guess that's quite inspiring, isn't it, as a writer? Well, we do three things, basically. One thing is we arrange reading circles where people can bring their own work. But we also do workshops about the technical aspects of the craft. So if you want to learn about how to do a screenplay or to write a drama, we'll do that too. But we also do a lot of uh, author visits because we know that ultimately the people who will inspire these young people will be other writers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you're talking about all, all kinds of writing, which That's is right, fantastic. Yes. And, and you are published yourself. And yes, I, guess, I, am. I guess there are many hurdles to actually getting to publishing. I mean, I'm, I, they say yes. that there's a book inside of all of us. They do, yes. But it's not so easy to get that book. Yes. Into paper, is it, That's really? That's right. I mean, it's, it's a very, very competitive market. and We live in what I call the, the cult of celebrity. So in order to, to actually get your first book published is extremely difficult. But it is about confidence. It is about believing in your story. So in areas like Manchester and Lancashire, you know, we really have so many stories that have not been told that I think would really interest people. Uh, can you help as well in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of people being published? Are there specialist publici publishers or, or particular publishers that you can yes. kind of direct people to? Oh, absolutely. I mean, because you've gone through yes. the experience yourself, obviously. I mean, look, what I'd say is, look, there are so many competitions out there, and that's a great avenue for perhaps just opening the first door and building that confidence. But really, you know, the industry is split into, let's say, the art side, where perhaps you know the, the names of those publishing houses isn't so well known, to the much larger trade houses that people do tend to know, like Penguin and so on. So really, it's about understanding what it is that, that somebody's writing and who who they should pitch to. Because ultimately, what most writers, the mistake they made make is they don't really make sure that their work is polished enough. Mm -hmm. And secondly they send it to the wrong place. But you also, as a writer, I guess these days, as an independent writer, you also need to be quite a good marketeer, don't you? It's almost yes. you need to be able to yes. sell yourself and your idea rather than just simply what you've what you've got on paper. So you've almost that added added pressure as well, really, haven't you? Yes, yeah, uh, I think the industry has changed. I mean, writers are expected to to actually promote their work quite strongly. I mean, there was a time when you know you just read a writer was just read and not seen. Yes, that has changed, and there, there is an argument that now well, they become huge celebrities yes. now, don't they? Yes, and multi million billionaires in some cases <laughs> as well don't they well, which, yes, which totally, actually yes. is is never really the true inspiration for being published That's is right. it really it's yes. usually either a, a belief or you know a great story uh, and i guess really initially you only have your yourself and maybe your close family or whoever you trust to yes. read through your material yes. so a group like yours really kind of gives you a great benchmark, doesn't it, of other people who are yes. creative? I mean, what we're hoping is, look, it's called Muslim Writers, but it's open to everybody. We have non-Muslim members and we invite you know, non-Muslim organisations. Mm -hmm. This is just the starter for 10. That's the way I see it. There's so many groups out, out there and there's so many avenues to be published. And really people, it's all about building confidence and saying to people, look, your story is of interest and what you're writing is of interest because the next big thing we'll never see coming. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's always a big surprise, isn't it? Yes. it, it it, it, it's time and place often as well, yes. isn't it? It's yes. almost like the equivalent of um, releasing music. Mm -hmm. You can have mm -hmm. the same track released ten times. It may be the ninth time yes. that it suddenly becomes the, yes. the massive explosion. And actually, writing does work in the same way, doesn't it? Yeah, th there are so many analogies with, with what you're saying mm -hmm. about music, yes. And I think all we're really trying to do is, is not actually to reinvent anything or to do something that's really new. But the people themselves are new. They, they haven't really, if you like, explored this. And we're just giving an opportunity. And if that means that you know there are people who come who are not Muslims, it does not matter. If it means that what people are writing about is not necessarily religious that does not matter mm -hmm. it really is for everybody and we are particularly interested in younger people coming forward listen i'm fascinated in you as a person as well you <laughs> have you have been published yes um what what kind of work have you had published well, so I've had far? Tell us about that. I've had one novel published so far called The Curry Mile, which okay. is set in Manchester's Curry right. District. Okay, so uh, a very contemporary piece yes, then. Yes, a piece of urban fiction. It's basically set on the Curry Mile where there's a father who runs lots of restaurants and his daughter becomes his rival. 
Ah, really? Yes. That sounds a fascinating So, What's the name of that book? That's The Curry Mile. The Curry Mile, right. Okay, sorry, you've said that three no, times. No, like that. So I just haven't taken it in. I've got so many questions in my mind to ask you. Um, so uh, so uh, when was that published? That was uh, late November 2006. That okay. Came out, yes. Fantastic. So, uh, so, and you have other published writers in the group, do you, so far? Yes. Yeah, we have a few people who, particularly in poetry, they've, they've had some work published. Okay. But what we're trying to do is to get people looking at all types of writing, whether it's non-fiction or fiction. We're even looking at blogging, we're looking at screenplay, we're looking at drama, uh, across the board. So, so hopefully out of this we're going to have some successful novelists and, and playwrights hopefully, as well. Hopefully, yes. But yeah. at, actually, bringing Muslim writers together as well uh, is very very important isn't it uh, as you say one of your one of your reasons for being is actually giving giving a, a minority group yes. a, a voice in in terms of the creative world uh, which certainly is a great thing well th there is an argument you know the post 9/11 post 77 7 yes we haven't really heard the the voice of you know Muslims emerging there's mm. lots of dramas out there there's lots of fiction out there lots of stuff which is being produced on television and so on but often it's not written by Muslims Muslims mm -hmm. and I think th sometimes it lacks a certain authenticity mm -hmm. not to say that you can't write about Muslim if you're not Muslim mm -hmm. not at all mm -hmm. but I think there is something that we've missed in a way and I think it's really really important that we allow those voices to emerge as well yeah it, it does it would appear that there there is definitely room in the marketplace at the moment oh, yes. for a good drama as you say mm. post 7 7 post 9 11 e even the recent uh, portrayal of the um, wedding in eastenders yes lots of people have yes. criticized that as yes. well mm -hmm. in regards to its authenticity as That's well right, yes um, although I spoke to the BBC about that, they mm -hmm. said that they had um, direct consultation with the BBC Asian Network yes. um, and had somebody on set in, in terms of working on the authenticity of that. Um, but I guess, it, it, like most things in the arts, it's, it's one opinion against the, another, isn't it? But do, mm -hmm. do you think as well part of this, part of what you're, you're trying to do is kind of break down those stereotypes as well? Yes, I, I think it's difficult for, for a broadcaster like the BBC to, I mean, the fact that they need consult, you know, consult or to consult on something mm -hmm. when really the, the, the kind of pedigree of a writer is in the research. Yes. And you don't have to come from that community, but if you really know that, 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 that world, take James Michener, you know, he's written lots of stuff and, and typically he would read 200 books on a subject just to be able to, you know, mm -hmm. get into the headspace yeah. of that world, whether yeah. it's about the space race or something else. And I think there is a lack of, um, not respect, but there's a kind of, there's a lack of almost understanding, almost a sort of an ignorance yes. that we actually don't know the do basics. You think it's, do you think it's a, f a fear as well, almost that fear of prying almost? To, to gain that authenticity. Possibly. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to put myself in in the place of a, a script writer or you know mm -hmm. a story mm -hmm. editor on something like EastEnders. You have to tread very, very carefully. But PC has almost gone to the stage where mm -hmm. maybe there is a reluctance or a fear to pry too far. Um, in case you're seen as being discriminatory. Well, I think where the problem may be is not the writing per se. I don't know if you ever read a script for, say, EastEnders or anything like that. If you ever read a script, it's actually quite bare. It doesn't give a lot of the details. Yes. So the people actually produce something and make it into a film or drama, mm -hmm. they often are the ones who do not know the milieu. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is, for instance, if you've got a scene where somebody's praying or a wedding scene, yes. you know, th they've got images in their head that this is ha what a wedding looks like. So there's yes. a collage of images in their head that they're putting together. And because they don't come from necessarily those communities, or have done the research attached to it, that's where the failing is often. So the actual script itself, you could actually say, yeah, the right person took this script, it would have been fine. But because they haven't, it doesn't work. Now, your organisation, Muslim Writers, it, it's based here in the northwest. That's you, right. you meet in uh, Nelson in Lancashire, don't you, yeah, on, a, on yeah. a regular basis. Tell us a little bit more about that and how many people are getting involved so far, because obviously it's a growing organisation, isn't it? Well, the Lancashire Muslim Writers, we meet at the A Centre, which is a new arts-based centre in Nelson, which is in Pendle. Yeah. And so that's going to be like the heartland for us in the Lancashire area. In Manchester, we meet at Shakespeare House in South Manchester. But really, it is the start, and uh, we've just arranged our first book launch, which is uh, on the 28th of March, which is a lady called Sharon Locke, who uh, in fact, she was a blogger. Uh, she was in Gaza when the attack occurred last year. Oh, really? And uh, her, her blogs have now become a book called Gaza Beneath the Bombs Underneath the Rockets. Right. And it's a fascinating, if you like, journey. You know, th they, in a way, what we want to show people is, look, this is just a blogger. 
Yeah. And there's been a few instances now of bloggers becoming, you know, pr authors, proper books being published. So it's fascinating from, say, the, the kind of political context, because many of our members are interested in that. Yeah. But I, I, I guess as well, sorry to interrupt, uh, I guess that there's a, a good opportunity as well, based in the north, for some, for some real gritty northern drama, if you yeah, like, for yeah, second uh, and third yeah. generation Muslims living in this yes. country. Um, that there must be some, some massive possibilities there. Um, so you're looking for more people to get involved, obviously, all of the time. Yes. You know, anyone is welcome. Like you say, not even, not necessarily Muslim writers either. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. How do people contact you? Because we're just running out of time now, unfortunately. Yeah, sure. If people email me directly at uh, admin at muslimwriters.org.uk, okay. then I'm happy to speak to them. And to, I mean, I get, I mean, I've just received uh, somebody uh, sending me stuff from Paris. Really? In French language, and they want help getting published. And I'm like, Hold on a moment. I, I, we're in the UK. Uh, you know, maybe one day. But, but you can you can hopefully point them in the right direction, or yes. certainly open up contacts for people as well. Uh, Zahid, I'm fascinated. I really am. I'm well, just so sorry we haven't more time to talk me. about this. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. I really appreciate it.